Thank you, Father. Thank you. The book of Leviticus in chapter 23. It's resurrection day. And that you and I are to walk in the power of resurrection, aren't we? Yes. The power, of, you and I are to be witnesses of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That means overcome temptation. Amen. Amen. That means taking dominion over what? Unforgiveness, bitterness, sin, yeah. lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of light. All those things are part of the world. God has given me and you the power already to walk in it. He's given us the power already. He paid the price for me and you. That we didn't no longer have to look towards our back but go forward. The Word says that you and I are blessed at every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Amen. Jesus said, I came to bring life and life more abundantly. Amen. Well, the only reason why people are not walking in abundant life is they're not walking in the Spirit. Amen. And they can't walk in resurrection power without walking in the Spirit. Amen. And the lust and the desires of the world will pull them right out of position and eat them up. Yes. Amen? Amen. So we are celebrating an event that Jesus Christ fulfilled, and only He could fulfill it. We celebrate it every year, but you and I celebrate it every moment of our living day. It's not a one-day event. It's in every breath. Is everybody with me? Amen. We don't celebrate His birth one day a year. We celebrate it every day. We thank God for everything. We thank God for His death, His resurrection. We thank Him for everything that He has done. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Only Jesus could fulfill. Everything in the Old Testament was a shadow of things to come. Amen? It was prophesied. And you and I are in a specific time that is awesome. It's awesome. Because we're going to see resurrection power even greater than we've ever seen before. It is a move of God that is going to be so tremendous. But this move of God is first. The blood always goes first. Those who are not repentant will be moved out of the way. Those who are not right with God will be removed out of the way. So that the Spirit of God can go through. Let me tell you, churches pray for revival. They wonder why they lose half their people. Amen. Before revival comes. Because God knows what's going on behind closed doors. He might not reveal it to us, but He gives people opportunity to repent. Amen. Amen. But before he can pour out his spirit, that's why the Bible says judgment comes first in the house of God. Amen. It comes first in the house of God. And the Lord sees all and knows all. <coughs> People do not have the reverence the way they should be. And it's called the fear of the Lord. Amen. Believe me, when they were around Jesus, they feared him. They were in awe of him. Especially when he pulled Lazarus out of the tomb. They all freaked. He told them, Martha and Mary says, listen, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. She said, what do you mean? He's been dead four days and he stinks. He says, I am the resurrection. In other words, I'm the one who gives life and takes it. <laughs> I'm the one who gives it and takes it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 23. In verse 9. Would you read it with me? And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring forth a sheath of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Now, he's saying, when you come into the land that I have given you. In other words, when you come to Jesus Christ and you accept him as Lord and Savior, you are now coming into a new land. <coughs> the old land is known as Egypt amen? amen that's of the world he's saying now you're coming into a new land now, now you've got to learn to live a whole different way because I've given you a new place to live I've given you a new life now you've got to learn a whole different way see freedom is learned amen. trust is earned isn't it amen. amen you've got to learn a whole new way of life and he said, listen, when you come into the land and you reap its harvest, then bring to me your first fruits. Offer him the first fruits. Amen? 
and uh, read verse 11 with me. And it says, And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer on that day when you wave the sheaf a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. Now check this out. When Jesus came, first of all, let me share with you that there are seven feasts of the Lord. The number seven means complete and perfect. There are seven feasts of the Lord. The first feast is called Passover. And the Jews still, still celebrate it. The second feast is called Unleaven. The third feast is called First Fruits. The fourth feast is, feast is called Pentecost. And then I'm going to share just a couple of these feasts right away. So the first feast is what? Passover. Passover. Then what? Unleaven. Unleaven. First Fruits. Pentecost. Pentecost. Anybody know the next one? Trumpets. Amen. That's the rapture. What's the next one? Atonement. Okay, and then tabernacle. So those seven feasts, only Jesus could fulfill. They celebrated on them in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, only Jesus could fulfill. And that's why he said he came to fulfill the law. Now, he also fulfilled the Sabbath. So just because we gather together on Sunday doesn't mean it's Sabbath Sunday. Or if we gather together on Friday, it's not Sabbath Friday. The word Sabbath means rest in Him. So that you no longer had to do rituals, but your constant communication is with Him. Your fellowship and your rest and your trust is in Him all the time. So you don't go to hell if you miss church. Hello. Amen. Amen. So I want to express the importance that only Jesus could fulfill all the feasts, even the Sabbath. Amen? Amen. In the book of Leviticus, it talks about the first fruits. Now, the first feast is Passover. Now, we know Jesus paid the price for that, didn't he? That was death on the cross. The second feast is the Feast of Unleavened. That's when he descended into hell and kicked butt on the devil. Because leaven means evil. And then he rose. And on that third day he rose. That's called first fruits or resurrection. Or what people call Easter. Now I'm not going to get in all in all the rituals. I'm going to stay right to the point to where the meat is at. Amen. Praise God. Go to Matthew 28. Is everybody with me? Do you understand? Okay. Glory. Matthew 28. Now remember, they had to offer a lamb, male lamb, blemish free. Amen? Amen? And it had to be after the Sabbath. Good. Hold that in heart. Okay. Matthew 28. And verse 1. Would you all read it with me? Is everybody there? Matthew 28 and verse 1. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Hold on, when? After what? After the Sabbath. It was just like what they were doing in the Old Testament, wasn't it? And behold, there was a great what? Oh, hallelujah. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid. He didn't tell the guards, Don't be afraid, did he? He said, Shake for a while. Acknowledge the presence of the Lord. I am fresh from the presence of the Lord. Feel his power and his glory. They felt like dead men. But he told those that were the beloved who were his, the children of the Most High. He said, don't be afraid. That's what the world's going to happen. See, that's what's going to happen. When the Lord descends, they're going to shake and quake. And they're going to be so afraid of, the, of His glory. 
But he's going to tell you and me, don't be afraid. Hallelujah. <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> but the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. See, those who don't seek Jesus are going to be shaken in their boots if they have any on. And verse 6 says, He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And quickly, and go quickly and tell His disciples that He is risen from the dead. And indeed, He is going before you into Galilee. There you will see Him. And behold, I have told you. And so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. Now that was reverence. Amen. Not the shaken. It was reverence fear. And they ran to bring his disciples the word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So the tomb was empty after the Sabbath. Now, this is called the Feast of First Fruits. The next feast that's going to be established is called Pentecost, which means five. Okay? It's a representation. The word Pente is five. So we know that from the day of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 50 days after that, he poured out the Holy Spirit. That's called Pentecost. Now we know that that has been fulfilled already, hasn't it? Now the next event is called the Feast of Trumpets. And that's where you and I get a glorified body. Hallelujah. We sure could use one. Yes. (laughs) Go to Matthew. Go back a little bit. Matthew 27. So they went. They noticed that the tomb was empty. The angel rolled it back and there was an earthquake. And all those unbelievers shook. And the believers that were there, they reverenced. And in Matthew 27 and verse 50, I want to go back to the beginning and how this originated because the first feast that had to be fulfilled is called Passover. Passover, unleavened, and first fruits. See, if you do not understand Passover and unleavened, you will not understand first fruits. These are all feasts of the Lord that must be fulfilled. It is important because it's a matter of of your walk with the Lord. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, people are just walking around, well, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. They have no idea that it's much more in death than Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Because see, He's my everything. When you understand what He's done for you, then you understand who you are. In Matthew 27, in verse 50, Jesus was on the cross accepting the sins of man. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He died. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This was in the temple. And the earth quaked. Here we get another quake. Every time Jesus moves, there's a quake. And the rocks were split. And the graves were open. Hello? The graves were open. Now listen, when he hit that earth, He died from the cross. When His Spirit hit that earth, the graves were open. Nothing can contain. You're talking about resurrection life that just went into the earth. All the graves that were around it opened up. Boom! The earth quaked. The rock split. He went right into the earth and went right after the devil. All those around that area, the graves opened up. And the graves were opened and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. So you can see all of these graves opened up. All these bodies were hanging out all over. That says it right there, right? Amen. Amen. Now, they didn't get up and walk. They laid there for a few days. Watch. In verse 53. And then it says, And coming out of the graves after what? His resurrection. So when he went in, the graves opened up. They laid there. When he rose, they rose. It says after his resurrection, everybody got to see death come back to life. 
Everyone in here has been resurrection has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because you were dead. You were walking dead. Oh, hallelujah. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the city, the holy city, and appeared to many. <laughs> so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. A little too late. Hopefully they repented. <clears throat> Amen. So I want you to understand something first. The blood always goes before the Spirit. Remember, he had to die on the cross. That shed blood had to be manifested. That's why God grants me and you repentance. He grants us repentance. So those who are living in fornication, those who are involved in ungodly deeds, God gives an opportunity to repent. Now the word repent means to turn away. Listen, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be tempted. Everybody gets tempted. I don't care whether you're a man, a woman, bisexual, or homosexual. Everybody gets tempted. Amen. You still have dominion to say no. Amen. 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 You still have the power to say no. Amen. Everybody has the power of resurrection, Jesus Christ, if you're his son, to say no to every temptation. Amen. I don't care if you're a drug addict, an alcoholic, a gambler. It doesn't matter. You still have the power in Christ to say no. Now, it's if you're walking in the Spirit. Because if the devil can move you out of the Spirit, you have no power. No power. Oh, hallelujah. There's something that this whole process began with. Jesus did not die on the cross. He died in the garden. Amen? Amen. He physically died on the cross, but he truly died in the garden, or else he would have never made it to the cross. Because, see, if it was me and you going to be killed for that, we might have ran. <laughs> he had to die to himself first. Only dying to self allows resurrection <coughs> power. Is everybody with me? This is where he said, and go to Matthew 16. The process of death produce resurrection power. And Matthew 16 and verse 24. Would you read it with me? Actually, let's start at, uh, hallelujah, while we're here, you know. In verse 21. <laughs> From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. So he was already telling them, wasn't he? And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall happen. So Peter got in the flesh, lost sight after he saw Jesus raise people from the dead, cast out devils, healed many people, uh, manufactured his own restaurant right out on the field and fed everybody, 5,000 people out of a few loaves of bread and a few fish. He did all of these things in front of his disciples. And Peter lost sight and got in the flesh and said, Lord, I'm going to protect you. <laughs> Anybody gets to you, they got to get through me first. <laughs> Foolish flesh creature, huh? <laughs> Amen. He loved the Lord. Amen. But he got in the flesh. In verse 23, But he turned and said to Peter, Now Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan. Ooh, that must have offended him. <laughs> you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. See, he didn't get the full picture, did he? He didn't get the revelation of the purpose of Jesus had to die. He was trying to interfere with the will of God. Oh, the devil loves to interfere with the will of God. That's why Jesus rebuked Satan, not Peter. <laughs> Amen? Let me tell you, Satan's trying to interfere with the will of God in your life. But God has given you resurrection power to say no and to walk upright. Amen. You know, I hear of all sorts of stuff going on. You know how the Holy Spirit keeps me? He always says to me, Guy, everybody must work out their own salvation. I said, thank you, Dad. Thank you. 
Somebody wants to serve the devil for two days, it's up to them. But they will reap what they sowed. Hallelujah. In verse 24, And Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let me tell you, that is the ultimate goal. That is everything. God came into the world. You know what his whole purpose was? To die. You know what your purpose is? To die. What about my life, my wife, and my kids? And what about... Die. It's dying to self. You will never fulfill and get the fullness of the perfect will of God in your life until you complete what God has issued to complete and to die to yourself. Oh, the world will offer you job opportunities. The world will offer you promotion. The world will offer you fame. The world will offer you lust. The world will offer you self. Only God offers you life. The world offers us death. Oh, they offer us everything. Here, do this, it feels good. (laughs) If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. The devil wants you to save your life. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus was expressed in exactly what he had to do. He wasn't telling me and you something that he couldn't do. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? (laughs) Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? (laughs) For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. You'll be rewarded in how much you died. Philippians 3. <clears throat> Praise God. <laughs> Come on, you didn't really think you were going to get a tip total of tulips teaching today, did you? <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. <laughs> it was a price for this resurrection power. And I'm going to acknowledge it. Because he deserves all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. Hallelujah. (laughs) Is everybody there? Well, would you hurry up, please? Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you there now, honey? Praise God. You're with us, aren't you? In verse 8, let's all read it together. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. That's a powerful Amen. statement. Amen. I count everything rubbish. It's all dung. <laughs> Poop. <laughs> that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That I may be found in Him. That Christ may the fullness of Christ may be manifested Amen. in us. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may what? No, let me tell you something. If you can't deny yourself, you don't understand resurrection power, you don't know Him. You read all about Him. See, going to church sometimes is like the Sunday morning newspaper. People go home and read all about them. The problem is they don't take, they don't eat the paper. (laughs) They need to eat the paper, man. (laughs) Hey, the Lord showed up and he 
told a servant, eat the scroll, right? Right, yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That I may know him in the what? In the power of his resurrection. Glory to God. That's our ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal first must die. See, you must complete and continue on. Jesus was the Passover. He had to deny himself. He fought the powers of darkness, didn't he? That was the Feast of Unleaven. You must fight the powers of darkness. And then he was the first fruit of resurrection power. And you must walk in that <coughs> power. Amen. Amen. So, because he's in you. Not only did he fulfill the feast, as he's fulfilling the feast, but you're walking in the fulfillment of the feast that he's fulfilled. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Because I'm not repeating it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That we may be, start in verse 9 and read that with me again. That we may be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. That's powerful. That we may know his, his resurrection power. Listen, it doesn't mean that you, everything's going to be wonderful and hunky-dory. That means you're going to go through suffering. Parts of that suffering is denying yourself. That's a part of that suffering. And every circumstance, every situation, every decision that you must make, you must deny yourself so that Christ can be glorified. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Amen. He's always got a way to glorify himself. Always. It may not see, <clears throat> seem it that way, but the end result is always that he will be glorified in everything you and I do. If that end result is not going to be in him being glorified, then it's not God. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Amen. Good. Now, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Now, I wanted to see something here. Wait a minute. Okay. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Everybody there? I'll wait. Proverbs, I'm not there yet. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 3. Now we just talked about the importance of denying self, right? Amen. We must deny himself, fight the powers of darkness, resist temptation, right? And walk in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Read it with me. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. There will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. Now wait a minute. He says with the first fruits of your increase. I want you to look at this as the Lord expressing himself. Because this is what he was doing. This was about Jesus. Jesus trusted in his Father. He trusted in everything. He came. I, he said, I didn't come to do my will, but his will. He said, this is not my doctrine, but his who sent me. Why? Because he was the first fruit, wasn't he? Amen. 
Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all of your increase, so your what? Barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. That brought the Holy Spirit and brought barns, filling of barns. Now let me share with you, you and I are the ones that are filling the barns. We are His first fruits now. We're filling, remember He said, I go to prepare a place for you. You and I are now filling those places that are being fulfilled. And those who passed before us are filling those places. They're all parts of the first fruits. Has everybody got it? Good. Go to Romans 8. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Everybody there? Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time, hello, I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compare, compared with the glory which shall be revealed in... Okay, now I want you to all say that, but that last part say in me. Okay? Let's say it again. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in me. What glory is that? Resurrection power. Oh, hallelujah. can be revealed in you now. By saying no. You know, you see them on the bumper stickers. It says, just say no. They try to tell people bound by drugs and alcohol, just say no. But they got no power. There's no power. Amen? No power. The only thing is, is there, you can either become a manager of your drug addiction or be free in Christ. People run the meetings and sponsors instead of the Lord. That's called management. See, if you're still struggling with something, then you're managing. Only Christ Jesus frees. Amen. Only through the blood and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ can you walk totally free. Now, everybody has a choice to go back even after they're free. Right. Amen? Because yeah. the devil's still going to tempt you. But if you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to say, no. Amen. No. Amen. See, if you say yes, then you deny Christ and you exalt yourself. If you say no, you exalt Jesus and you deny yourself. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. In verse 19, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who's the sons of God? We are. We are. Every, every, even creation is waiting for me and you to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Even creation is bound by corruption. Ever since Satan took over, of course he only leased the place. It's only temporary. Everything is in bondage. The world is in bondage. People are bound by fear, doubt, unbelief, torment, confusion, bitterness, anger, hatred, unforgiveness, lust, addictions, yes. pornography and fornications, all things that fulfill the flesh. And the Word tells us that anyone who practices such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Nor will the resurrection power be manifested in us at this point in time. Glory to God. In verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the what? First fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Now let me explain something to you. You and I are groaning for the fulfillment of our redemption. 
Now listen, when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose with a new body. Now you and I have resurrection power, but we're waiting for that new body. Does everybody understand that? So we're, you and I are eagerly groaning and we're waiting and we're fighting to stay in the presence of God until this whole fulfillment of this new glorified body comes. Amen. And it will be just like Daddy. Amen. Amen. Like Father, like children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if Jesus rose from the dead with a glorified body, that's our next... That, now that's called the Feast of Trumpets. Amen. That we'll have that glorified body. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because we're his first fruits. Does everybody understand that you're the first fruits of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Yes. And it's continuing on. Good. Hallelujah. Go to James 1. James chapter 1. In verse 17. there Amen. hallelujah James chapter 1 and verse 17 everybody, everybody all right yeah are you getting this yeah. praise God verse 17 read it with me every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow turning of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Hallelujah. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And I say, you want to work in walk in resurrection power? This is what you do. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. He says, Be doers over the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect liberty of the law and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religious is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans, widows, in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Everyone, keep myself Unspotted, unspotted from the world. From the world. That's how you walk in resurrection power. And I want to close with First Corinthians fifteen. Oh, hallelujah! Selfishness and greed will spot you. Fifteen twenty, First Corinthians fifteen twenty. First Corinthians fifteen, chapter twenty. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. But now Christ is risen from the dead, and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, 
it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son, Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all and in all. Praise God. So there's more than just the Easter. It's not about bunnies and chasing eggs. It's about the true resurrection of Christ. It's about fulfillment. We are celebrating His fulfillment of the Feast of First Fruits. That you and I are now the first fruits of the resurrection of life. The resurrection that you and I were once dead and now can live. The Word tells us in the book of Revelation. Why don't we go there for a second and close there. (laughs) Hallelujah. Come on, we'll close there. (laughs) Oh, praise God. In the book of Revelation, in uh, chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20. Is everybody there? Good. And verse 1, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years were finished. But after these things... He must be released for a while. And I saw thrones, and, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the witness to Jesus and the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on, his forehead, on their foreheads or on their hands. That means their thoughts and their works. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again, and to the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Hallelujah. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's you. That's you. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection. Blessed. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for paying the price. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you. Oh, Lord, we just take this opportunity and we repent. Lord, we repent for associating with anything of the world. We repent. We repent, Lord, for not believing that you're faithful to complete what you started. Lord, we repent for our grumbling and complaining and woe is me and self-pity. We repent for accusing and associating with every evil spirit. We repent. Lord, we stand before you naked. We want to walk in your resurrection power. Jesus. Take your place because of the price that you paid. Take your place. And establish us to be sons and daughters that are pleasing to you with resurrection power. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Hallelujah.